Welcome to the Italy room. Um, I've never done this before. This is the first time I've done something that has to do other than with the... Well, I, I guess I've done a couple of things that were other than Black Forest or German related. And so it was really fun for me to uh, learn things about the nativities in Italy and how the history of it really diffuses the culture of Italy. Um, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So the trees that we see in the beginning have always been part of the nativity scene, uh, sometimes dry trees, sometimes trees where we can see the life that came out of the dry tree, which represents the life of Christ, the gift that God has given us to have eternal life. The earliest depictions in Italy uh, we have from sarcophagi from the fourth century where uh, people on their coffins had inscribed, had engraved uh, depictions of the Jesus Christ. The oxen represented the house of Israel, and it's the beast of burden, burdened down by the law. And the ass represents the Gentile being burdened by the sin of idolatry. And so the Christ child came to them to really lift the burdens of both of them and to bring them back to the true God and to help them to see how eternal life is really gained only through Jesus Christ our Savior. So then, as the years went by, um, you can see the Byzantine influence in, uh, in Italy where we see Mary kind of in a stylized setting and uh, she's joined by the three kings who also were uh, an earlier depiction that we find in Italy even then um, than Mary being part of the nativity scene. So first it was just the, the beast and the Christ child and then later the three kings and then Mary and we see midwives and uh, seeing that the nativity became more elaborate. Then um, at the first also we see, don't see the intimacy between the mother and the child. Um, the mother is always a little bit removed from the child. And then as we f move further into time, into the Gothic period, which of course this is not a representation of, but we see a more intimate relationship between the mother and the child. The mother begins to hold the child or gaze upon the child. And then during the Renaissance, the mother begins to kneel in front of the child, in front of the king of kings. I have really enjoyed this room. I've enjoyed uh, placing the figures. There are many things that have touched me, things that have been pointed out to me by uh, women that have come to just lend me an eye. And one of it was just how, how the king offers up his crown, um, which is reflected in the crown here. And to me, it was a, it was a reminder how King, Le King uh, Lamoni's father offered, us, offered up all of his sins to God just to get to know him. And in a way, this is what we have been doing as part of the crash. We've just been offering up our talents, all we have. And sometimes, as Connie has pointed out to me, there's a li little woman over there that only has sticks to offer in, the, um, in her crash in the um, Santon room. And that's all she had to offer. And sometimes during the time that we spent here and frustration that Wendy pointed out, I felt all I have to offer is sticks, but it's good enough. Because out, out of the sticks can come life too. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, just has been beautiful to me. And then later, of course, if you just a little bit further along in art history, we find also that Joseph becomes part of the scene. And uh, I love this picture where Joseph actually holds him. He's not just being apart from the nati nativity or then coming closer to being the part of the holy family that to us constitutes the nativity, but how he actually loves and holds the child as a custodian of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in terms of offering, again, we have people offer their hearts, as in this little nativity, people offering all they have, all, all of the things that they have in this Neapolitan crash over there. The shepherd offering a sheep to the Christ child, just like Christ offered his life to, for us and to his heavenly Father to redeem us. <coughs> and so the idea of offering and of giving all you have um, is part of what I see in this room. This great hall is the European collection. So it's an assortment of all countries for in Europe. So 
I just want to say on a human take is, um, you know, my feet really hurt. My back is breaking in half. My fingernails are broken off. And we're all in that condition. Our house is a little neglected. My appliances miss me. <laughs> but we're, that we all feel that way, but don't, don't kid yourself. We love it. We love being here. And what a gift it is to us to be able to be here and work all week long and make such beauty and pretty, pretty up things and enjoy each other's company. And we get lunch brought in and candy. And, and so, I mean, who wouldn't want to be here? Even though, you know, we have a few little aches and pains and, and things like that. But that's, you know, we wouldn't be here if we didn't love it. And how, um, how we kind of uh, think about this is our gift to our community. It's our gift to each other. But in the long run, it's a gift to us to be able to, to um, present all these lovely collections. And it teaches us so many things just working for the whole week. It teaches us to leave our ego at the door and, um, you know, you have to not be prideful and, and you have to be willing to give up, give up things that you counted on and, well, I'm going to be flexible, even though I don't want to be, but I'm going to be, and teaches us a lot of patience. Um, one example is I notice when people come in with their crushes, they want to talk to you about it and they want to tell you <laughs> little things and you're you're in a hurry you want to you have a time limit you want to get finished and leave and but you have to be gracious and patient and be willing to listen these are other people's treasures and so we respect that and and um, they're very endearing to us and so I couldn't I just couldn't be happier than being here and, and thanking everybody all the wonderful help that we all get I am really blessed, and thank you very much. Catherine really had the vision for the Moroccan marketplace for our Africa side, and for the cherry blossom trees and the lanterns for our for our Asia area, and um, and then Catherine kept telling me she couldn't visualize the colors, and for me the colors I wanted this room to just kind of glow and be really inviting, so that people would want to cozy up in here and, <laughs> and um, see all the crushes. And um, I am just blown away by all the help that we've received. My mom worked so hard. She's like trying to make us take the credit. But <laughs> we really just had this idea. And then people came and, and made it happen, the missionaries and the, the men that we kept bugging to come in here and tweak lights for us. So um, and we're, we're just so grateful that everyone was willing to share their talents um, for us and give us advice. Um, the room that I'm talking about now is the one over there, which we usually call the seminary room now. And um, this year we're calling it Nativo, which is a lot easier than saying North American, Native American, South American, Native American. <laughs> um, I think of it as the good news, bad news room. Uh, because many of the representations are, I'm sure, remnants of our Lamanite brethren. We just don't know which ones for sure. So the, the bad news is the Lamanites gave the Nephites so much trouble, and the good news is that they've reversed things a few times, and so we have to love them. Uh, the other good news, bad news thing is that all of these Native American tribes um, pretty much had their culture destroyed. Uh, the ones in Central South America, which have a good representation, really were completely, their culture and their buildings and their people were destroyed by the Spanish. That was the bad news. The good news is that the Spanish did introduce Christianity. And many, many, many years after the Spanish, in many ways, faded away, their culture left behind this remnant of Christianity, which was picked up 
by many of the Native American tribes, and uh, they began to uh, create wonderful creches. Back in the 1950s, they began. So from the 1950s to the present, we have just a wonderful representation of nativities from many, many of these tribes. So I hope you enjoy looking at them. So I'll, I'll stop, and if you just make that crescent circle. And thank you for the opportunity of letting me do this room. You know how much I loved it. Well, I have the delight of what I equate to the dessert room. <laughs> After everyone feasts on all these incredible, um, elegant, exquisite rooms, I feel like I got the lighter side of things and more or less like a sweet shop. And um, I really enjoy doing the miniatures and looking into the small details of things, as Heavenly Father does. Um, the Lego crash almost didn't make it. <laughs> I moved it a bit, and Joseph's head fell off, and our um, artist came back to repair it for me. I'm very, very proud to have this in our room. It's a big draw, and um, it brings a lot to the room. And this is the room that has the glass and the smooth stones, pewter, and um, uh, let's see, pewter, and what else is here? Silver, glass, and um, paper. <laughs> and, and we just thought that it really lent itself to a wintry, cool feeling of silver and frothiness, marshmallows, and whipping cream. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was the feeling that we wanted to convey in this room of just a simpleness and a sleekness and uh, a um, focus on the Savior. And we just received so much joy in setting this up and looking at the, the nativity scenes as we did so. And we hope that you enjoy it as well. Visually, we received our inspiration from the two uh, main pieces, which we hope are the focal point. Here in North America, we have this beautiful stained glass. And here for this Latin American area, this stained glass. To me, these um, arches, uh, as they have through sacred spaces and cathedrals everywhere, always pointed hever heavenward with the stars. And we use that as our visual repeating motif. Uh, ascension, you'll see many high elements of black ascending towards heaven, very vertical spaces, and the repeated three arches, which of course were of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so in every main area, you'll see these uh, repeated three arches. Um, and many of the main crushes we've chosen or, or displayed them in areas of arches and had stars. So we hope this has a feeling of us looking upward, and the other part is of light and warmth, which um, comes sheer joy. That spirit of joy really reminded me of Isaiah, uh, where he um, talks about the coming of the Savior and speaks of singing with joy, and, the, and every element of the earth clapping your hands. And these colors, hot pink and aqua, you'll see this combination of cool and warm colors throughout the aqua, the orange, this blue, the sense of joy and warmth and, and light. Come ye to the waters, come ye that thirst. Um, incline your ear and come unto me and your soul shall live. And it says as we do that we will go out with joy and we shall be led forth with peace. three different images. I actually have three ideas that go with this particular um, presentation. The first is the idea that these are stained glass windows that give the, what gives them their life is light. The first element of creation, let there be light, and Jesus who came and told us that he was the light of the world. So when we look at the stained glass windows, it's easy to appreciate why that light brings such beauty. I think the second thing that I would say about these having to do with the Savior is the idea of glass itself. It used to be nothing more than sand lying somewhere inanimate. 
and then through a lot of heat and a lot of process, it becomes a beautiful piece of glass. And it makes me think of what the Savior's mission was all about when he came here. And he takes simple elements of the earth and makes them more than they were and increases their capacity and increases their um, life-giving elements, whether that's taking simple water, turning it into wine, or matter unorganized and turning it into a world, or a person such as ourselves and turning us into something much more than we ever dreamed we could be. And the third part of these stained glass windows, I think, is the idea that we share so much of our Christian heritage with the world. We have a, a religion that we are, that is very dear to us, but not so different in elemental ways from others. And so it's hoped that when people come and they see stained glass windows here, it will be, if they're not members of our church, something that reminds them of, of the heritage that we share and uh, the way that Christianity unites us. Um, of the whole composition, though, I think the thing that I personally learned from this is Christmas is a time when everybody starts thinking as a baby. You will see 200-pound men singing, I love thee, Lord Jesus, stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to forget that what the scripture says is, for unto us this day a Savior is born. This was a physically very difficult project. It's much too big for me. It's one thing to have the idea, it's quite another thing to have to put it 14 feet in the air. And you, you, no matter how well you plan, there's going to be something that will surprise you and it will be physically too much for you. If you had seen the state of this project last night, you wouldn't believe that it was up. I can't begin to tell you my stress level regarding that. I felt so lost and so hopeless. And um, I made a phone call to Ned Hollis, who came and saved me. And I was so grateful to him, who brought his expertise and um, his understanding of the project and just abilities that I do not have and made this possible. And the same is true for Owen, who stayed with me until, well, I like to say we got uh, finished with this project early. <laughs> <laughs> very early this morning. I am grateful for the idea of the Savior, and I'm getting hoarse, but it's, um, it's a wonderful thing to think about ourselves and mortality, and we sometimes lose track of the fact that we come here, and no matter how hard we try, and our best plans, and our best efforts, sometimes it, we just can't make it work, but a Savior who can comes and saves us, and how grateful we are for that. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs> We have the star, which is the physical part of our being. We have the angel, which is our, our connection with heaven. The, the part of us that uses our mind, the part of us that uses our heart. These are both ways that the Lord communicates the star to the, to the uh, kings, the angel to the shepherds. Um, this is kind of this, this dual messaging that we get from the Lord represented in a, in a crash. Should everyone who sees its title thinks it's a typo and that the computer just got all mixed up because it's called Behold the Lamb of God, Beholding the Lamb of God, Beholding the Lamb of God. Not a typo. Uh, the reason for this, what's different here with the Holy Family is there is an interloper. This is a boy. He's a shepherd who's holding a little sheep. And the sheep is craning his neck forward to see his creator. And his creator is reaching backwards with enthusiasm to see for the first time in flesh, in the flesh, one of his creations. We need to remember with the Christmas story that this little baby who once part of the Red Sea, who fed Israelites in the desert miraculously, who did all these great and mighty miracles in the Old Testament, is this tiny little baby who now is having his turn at his own mortal experience in his own time to receive a mortal body and the joy that comes with this phase of our, our eternal progression. So he reaches back joyfully, and he has for the first time now a physical body, and is kicking his legs, and he's reaching his arms out in toward this little lamb, who in turn is regarding his creator. So hence the Lamb of God, beholding the Lamb of God, beholding the Lamb of God. <laughs> and that's the reason for the, the title for this. My very favorite thing about being here is the experience that I'm able to share. that I'm able to share with all of you. 
and it's my favorite five days of the year coming here, although I don't want to go home and decorate my house or my trees, but I really appreciate the time that I'm able to spend with you all. And over the years, my friends, all, really most of my good friends are not members of the church, and they all know that I work here. And the first year, they came, I know, to support me as a friend. And once they were here, they saw what an amazing demonstration of our faith in Jesus Christ that we have and what a beautiful setting we have here at the church. And now they come because they want to come and every year that I come I see so many faces that I know are not members of the church but of families that I see all over Palo Alto from my girls ballet classes to swimming to soccer and I'm just so pleased that our, our church puts on this crash and that all of you work so hard to make the crush what it is. And it's an amazing missionary experience, experience and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Thanks. Uh, this year we're working with 339 uh, hostess volunteers and um, we are, our hope for them is that all of them and all of the people that come and visit the creche will feel of the spirit here. It's been a wonderful spirit and so beautiful and that they will take this with them for the rest of December. Um, let's see, this is the room that um, they come to uh, practice their quiet, practice their music, or this is a sleepover room, this is a room that they um, just come and um, put their things in. And um, let's see, we are, um, we have, this year we have um, a box, a, a comment box in there, and last year we had actually some really nice comments. We'd like to tell you about two of them. The first one was written, Guy, and he said, the first night I worked at the creche this year, I saw two women come in. One was excited to be there, but it was obvious that the second had been dragged along. She had a frown on her face. I asked her if this was her first time here, and she said yes, in a way that told me to buzz off. <laughs> After my shift was over, I wanted to look around and was in the Relief Society room when I saw the woman with the frowny face again. I asked her if it was worth the time and trouble for her to come. She gave me a big smile and said that was, it was fabulous, and it felt that she had just taken a trip around the world without leaving the building. Mm -hmm. And Glenna has a second story. Okay, and the other thing we wanted to tell you about our room, our room is the favorite room because it has candy. <laughs> <laughs> and caramels for those who have. Um, the person who wrote this was greeting in the, in the foyer uh, on a Sunday night when a young, um, East Indian couple came in and they graciously acknowledged the visitor, uh, the greeter as they visited him and then they started looking around um, at the beautiful creches in, front, in the front uh, foyer space and after a few minutes the wife asked if, um, if the person could come over for a few minutes and uh, they wanted to ask them some questions and then she said, we are not Christian and do not know the story of the figurines represented here. Could you please tell us what the figures represent? And the person began telling them the story about the prophecies about the angelic visitations to Mary and Joseph to announce the coming Lord, about the star which was recognized by both magi and shepherds, though one group had learned of it through study and science, while the other had been invited by angels sent by the Father. I told them why the Son of God was born, far from home in a stable, about his royal lineage and about the way his life and ministry was forever formed by kingship and humility woven into every act, every teaching. They listened with intense interest, respectful sweetness, and made a point of saying goodbye and thank you when they left an hour or two later. Somehow, for the rest of the time, I saw the entire exhibit with new eyes. Having told the story to grown-ups who had the innocent, childlike sweetness to come and ask and hearing to begin to understand. So, thank you. And Tina? Tina okay, so now we're going to have Tina talk about her publicity. Well, now that um, 
all the hard work has taken place and all the beautiful crushes have been arranged in such a loving manner, it's been my job to make sure we have people here who will um, enjoy it the way um, we know that they will and that they will sense the love and the care that have gone into all of the exhibits on display. I'm delighted to be part of the publicity, but you too are very much a part of the publicity because without you and all of our members and people sharing the information, no one would know about the crush exhibit. I do have a board of newspaper clippings. I also have some of our um, actual publicity out there as well as our website publicity. And I invite you to poke your head in and take a look at it. I have to just share, first of all, with you a story, though, that goes way back to February because this is an inspirational story to me from Lisa, and I actually just heard it a couple of days ago. But I often wonder, how am I going to sell the crush exhibit? What, what is it that's going to convince people that they want to come? And when I heard this little story, I have to say, just really, it brought joy to my heart. And that's what it was about. It was a heart. Uh, Lisa was down in Carmel at the um, Carmel Bay Company and happened to see some hard ornaments, beautiful red glass hard ornaments. And I guess they were left over from Valentine's Day. I may not be telling the story exactly right. But it was at that moment that she sensed the idea of love and joy in our heart that sort of pointed in her in the direction of our theme. And our theme this year is, let every heart prepare him room. And that comes from joy to the world. And I hope that as you view the exhibit today, you will sense the joy and the love um, in your heart for what everyone has done time and energy wise, what we've all done to contribute to the success of the crash. I also want to thank Lisa for the beautiful crest she picked out. I hope you saw it in Ludwiga's room. It was the crest from Italy, uh, Sicily actually, the terracotta crest just to the right of the centerpiece in the room. And it's a little bit whitewashed in comparison to this one that you see on the card. We call this the sunburned or the suntan version mm -hmm. of what's um, actually on display. But I think if you go and take a close look at it, you'll appreciate the beauty that Lisa saw in that because this is our selling point. This is what the public is seeing and what encourages them to come and, and view the crush exhibit. Um, to give you some idea as far as the publicity goes, we have 20,000 um, pass along cards. Those are the smaller ones right here. 20,000 of these that the missionaries and all of you have helped us to distribute. We have 15,000 of the postcards that we're also encouraging people to take and to share with friends. They can also be mailed. We have um, 12, let's see, let me just get my numbers straight here. We have 10,000 bookmarks, which will be handed out at the end uh, when people leave the crush exhibit. And I hope if you want to take any and share them with people, they're lovely to put in Christmas cards. And you can also share them with um, neighbors as well. And last of all, we had 2,000 flyers. And the flyers are what you see posted in windows and bulletin boards. So the long and the short of it is, it's a huge undertaking. But without you helping out, we would not have the success that we do. No matter how many people come, we know that those who come will really benefit um, about the validity of Christ and his birth and the love that he has for each of us and the love that we have for him. Thank you so much. Don't you just feel so privileged to have been here and shared this? It's been a wonderful experience watching this exhibit grow, but to have this added richness, to hear the thoughts of those who have spent so much of their time and labor and heart in this. And, and I feel like our theme of letting every heart prepare him room has been manifested in so many ways. I, it's felt like a family. It's been wonderful to have Wendy back with us, to have Marguerite fully healthy. I mean, to just to have all of the people who over the years the crush exhibit has meant so much to, to have like new family members, to have another generation of helpers. There were a lot of uh, children that came and helped parents uh, this year at the crush exhibit, and that was just a delight to see as well. And I, one of the scriptures that were um, motivating me for this theme comes from Luke, one of the two gospels that gives us this wonderful nativity story that we're able to celebrate that these crush artists are able to depict. And Luke says that thou shalt serve the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And Paul Gilman has made a beautiful calligraphy of this scripture that, that he had, but it wasn't up to his standard, so he's redoing it right now. But that will be on display in the exhibit. 
and it's been displayed this week. We've had all of our hearts here. We've had all of our strength and then beyond. We've been had strength beyond our ability. We've had all of our minds as we've seen problem after problem solved in creative ways. And we've had so much helping of our neighbors. I have, there's every room has got touches and, and help and inspiration from others who've brought supplies or given advice on whether a fabric needs to go this way or that or what colors work. And, and that's the spirit of the crush exhibit. That's the spirit in which it's, it's offered to the community. And I appreciate all of you for being here as we have literally prepared room for over 400 Christ Childs to come to this building, to, from building the boxes, to building the table layers, to draping the fabrics, to literally preparing a home for each unique one. And as we have prepared our own hearts to welcome the Savior and to prepare our own spirits to recognize our Savior in the others that we serve. And I'm grateful for the experience of serving with you in this crush exhibit. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>